Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're excited to be together again and to meet a well, new to me neighbor, a Hopkinton resident, Marla Morasco. That's right. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Um, a little over two years. Ah, yeah. okay. Indiana. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. And you're like me, I'm a Midwesterner yes. from Ohio. Yeah. yeah. But originally from New Jersey, both my husband okay. and I. So. What brought you to Hopkinton? My husband's job. He works for Synovian okay. in Marlboro. Oh, very, oh, very cool. cool. Yeah, Excellent. So. Very cool. Is, that's the company that bought out the investment? I'm thinking I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have so. been so busy. I um, have just, and it's exciting to meet you. And Connie, yeah. thanks for introducing us all to and welcoming Marla to well, this show. I had the unique opportunity of running into them at the Spoon, mm -hmm. okay. and I happen to know a little bit of sign language, and our son does some sign language, right. and that's how the conversation started. Right. Yeah. And he's adorable. So tell us yeah. a little bit about why you're here. Sure. So uh, basically, my son has Down syndrome, and so I'm a very big advocate in the Down syndrome community. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we, my husband and I, have been heavily involved with an organization right here in Marlboro in our backyard, um, Blue Mind RDS, which stands for Research Down Syndrome. Mm -hmm. And basically, they um, get funding to do research um, to create or develop treatments that will help individuals with Down Syndrome um, maintain and or improve their cognition, their memory, and their speech. Uh, because I don't know that any of us knew this, but basically individuals with Down syndrome get um, Alzheimer's earlier in life. Wow. I want to know, can I, will this help me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe. <laughs> he's 11. Ah, yeah. So does yeah. he go to school at all? He does. He's in Hopkins and he's in fourth grade and um, he's in Mrs. Pines classroom. It's an amazing community, I have mm. to say. The kids have been so wonderful here. Oh. I, I may not pronounce it right, the, the initials, is it SPIAC or C CPAC? CPAC. Yes. Are you so are you involved in that yes, also? Yes, I'm actually the president Oh, CPAC. okay. Well, what is CPAC, for it's those of um, us who don't know? a special education advisory committee. Okay. So it's for the parents of individuals that are um, in the special education system, IEPs or 504s, and we meet monthly, and we meet with uh, Dr. Zaleski, and sometimes we have the opportunity to meet with Dr. McLeod. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about, you know, either issues or, or good things and, you know, things we can improve on here within our in Dr. Our community. Dr. is mm -hmm. the head of special education? She is, yeah, okay. the director of student services. Yeah. Oh, oh, student services, yes. so not just special ed. I think that's what they call it here. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So even, I think locally we have a decent program, but I'm assuming you are aware their own state senator, Karen Spoka. Yes. Her mm -hmm. sister just passed away. Oh, complications of all sides, mm -hmm. but head downs. And she's a huge advocate. Yeah. So yeah. I think we have a very supportive state and local we are, community. We are in a very, very good state. Um, May 9th is going to be Down Syndrome Advocacy Day, and we're oh, all wow. heading to the State, state House. House. Yes. Oh, wow. Very so, good. So I will be there as well. Excellent. So. <laughs> but let's talk about your advocacy and some cool stuff you've done recently. Yeah, so I actually, again, had the wonderful opportunity through Blue Mind. Um, and for the last couple of years, they have been asked if they wanted to send a presenter um, through the Down Syndrome International mm -hmm. to World Down Syndrome Day, which is March 21st at the United Nations in New York. Wow. And because the theme is My Community, My Voice, which is about advocacy, self-advocacy, um, they had asked if I wanted to submit my speaker bio. And I said, sure. And I, of course, you know, lived in New Jersey all my life, never been to the United Nations, <laughs> and I was scared. I'm not going to be, <laughs> yeah, I'm right, be right. honest. It's very intimidating. And, yeah, I was. It's so huge. when I got accepted, I got the wonderful email to say, You're, you've been accepted to speak. I was like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What did I do? Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it was amazing. So I got to present, and, and my presentation was on why your voice matters, mm -hmm. and um, basically talked about all my advocacy and how I, I've gotten involved in the community and at school and doing presentations for the kids mm -hmm. at school and being involved with the um, Hopkinton Diversity and Cultural mm -hmm. Alliance and mm -hmm. speaking with them, mm -hmm. um, and basically ended it with um, basically your voice becomes their voice, mm -hmm. yeah. and that yeah. you're building them up and, and you know giving them responsible and self-esteem to start self-advocating. Mm -hmm. 
So, so is this also where they, when they transition from you know high school to adulthood, that that kind of advocacy is almost extremely crucial. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, where you know, they, where it, you know, when they hit that 23 mark where they, everything ends. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of the whole point again with, with Lumind and their research is that, you know, we want them to be able to go on to, you know, secondary education yeah. and be able to have an independent life and get jobs. And so they need to have that cognition and that speech and, you know, that self-esteem to be able to go out and live, you know, a normal life and have mm -hmm. opportunities out there to be successful. Well, it always seemed to me that Hopkinton was a progressive school system in that, you know, children of all abilities were integrated yes. in the classroom. Yes. Um, I had the pleasure of being a substitute teacher for a short while, um, a while back in, you know, the 2000 or eight or something. Anyway, I loved it. But sometimes I would um, get to partner with a child with, with certain abilities and shadow them and work with them as they went through their classes. And it was just wonderful, honestly, it seemed to me, how other children just embrace them oh, as part of the class. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I subbed in the art department, so there's a lot of movement yeah. and just being people I mean, being together. You know, and that's and that's what I think is really important. If you want to see change, you've got to be part of it. You mm -hmm. gotta you gotta be that voice and, and, and make that change happen. And I have for the last several years since Jacob has been in school, I've always gone in um, during October because that is Down Syndrome Awareness Month and presented to the kids and I did so, just do that. So October's Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Yes. March 21st is World Down Syndrome Day and then coming up is another day for Down Syndrome? State. Well, that's the, the state. State house, okay. Yeah. State uh, and, three twenty and so basically 321, which is World Down Syndrome Day, is brought about because it's the chromosome. The chromosome. Right. The chromosome, <laughs> chromosome is, is yeah. okay. triplicated. Okay. So yeah. that's where they got 321. And so then they make it a oh, world that's big, well, celebration. Yeah. So the so UN great. experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there were other presenters yes. and from around the world. Yes. Or so, and did you guys get to share? Yes, we did. So the panel that I was on, again, was about um, being an advocate. And so it was just amazing being in that room with. Um, international delegates from all over the world and they were sharing their stories and you know it, it is kind of sad to hear that you know they've not moved on or progressed as far as awareness mm -hmm. is concerned and inclusion and education so it is so sad to see that that still takes place in these countries but it is amazing to hear how far they have come they've gotten past all of the you know the, exactly mm -hmm. and they've um, been able to create their own nonprofits and so it was really wonderful to hear that so I was on a panel with about six people. The lady before me was from Romania. There was people there from Poland and Italy, and it was an amazing day of advocacy. So wow. I was. Now, did you bring Jake up to watch? I didn't, and honestly, I'm glad I didn't because um, it, you know, Pretty you had detective. to be quiet. Yeah, you had to, you know, you had right. to be quiet while everybody was talking. But mm -hmm. um, the good thing about it was that the night before, I got to go to a cocktail reception and meet the president of the National Down Syndrome Society, wow. Sarah Weir who when you first, when I first started out in the community of Down Syndrome and learning and doing my research, you know, those are the big organizations you like, you hear about and they're doing all this work and then I had the wonderful opportunity to wow. meet her and have a conversation with her. Never in a million years <laughs> that I, wow. I would even think that I would be talking to the president of the National Down Syndrome Society. Really? Yeah. So I yeah. Ask, yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely, I wanted to ask you, are there, what were your big takeaways from that conference? Like, are there other countries that are doing something, you know, very admirable or that, Yes. Where do we stack up in your estimation? Uh, you know, yes, I do think that we are obviously a lot farther along, but mm -hmm. like Canada is doing wonderful things. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you really do a lot of research, they're doing a lot of videos and oh, okay. getting the kids in front of Born This Way, which oh, is the, mm -hmm. you know, an mm -hmm. Emmy winning um, reality oh, show. Thank you. And a Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> one of the girls that, one of the actresses that's on that show was actually there. She was sitting right in front of me because oh, oh, she wow. was also a speaker. Um, and it's just really, it's about getting them in front of the camera, in front of people, letting them share their story, mm -hmm. and just breaking down those barriers. Oh. Oh. We live in a really great state mm -hmm. and in a really great community. What about the rest of the U.S.? When you compare us, you were comparing us to some of the other countries, mm -hmm. what about the rest of the U.S.? Um, I have to say, we're from Indiana mm -hmm. to Massachusetts, it's light years. Um, we are very much more here in Boston uh, advanced with our uh, education, our medical um, opportunities. So just, you know, going states from state, yeah, you do hear about 
some really nice things happening over there in California or mm -hmm. something. But when you have these opportunities, Boston General and Children's, I mean, really right in your backyard, it's really a shame if you don't take the opportunity to get involved with those wonderful programs. So I can't say enough about Massachusetts and the opportunities here. I think, you know, watching things at the high school level more is I've seen, you know, we have a child with Down syndrome who's a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. We have a child with Down syndrome who just did a prom proposal last week. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And um, we have a child with severe special needs that is now at LaSalle. And I know that LaSalle and Mass Bay and Quincy have actually developed these inclusion programs yes. so that they can actually transition from, you know, high, high school, school and, that, and cover the whole cost of the college, too. Right. And that, you know, the, yeah. because That's basically, good. you know, they get funding and they get all this special help. And then as soon as high school is over, and a lot of them graduate from high school, right, right. a year or two older than than Average. than what they would, they, they would think mainstream, but then um, where do they go? Right. Yeah, so, you know, hearing from friends and stuff like that, that, you know, I, one friend has a son at LaSalle now, and I have a friend who has two children at Quincy going through that inclusion program, that those only got developed in the last decade. That's true. They, they right. didn't happen. That, that they didn't have true. college opportunities and for, for that kids, is certain true. kids with special needs. Yeah. And see, that's why I think, again, it's very important to get out there and learn what's out there because I went to the Indiana, the, the Down Syndrome Conference in Indiana, and again, I got the opportunity to meet um, the student director or whatever it was mm -hmm. of Clemson mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, UNCG, University mm -hmm. of North Carolina, and they have these beautiful uh, life programs they call right. them um, and engaging them in you know the academics and just the community life right. of secondary school and a lot of the kids if they don't go on to uh, college they're they're running their own businesses I mean I, I yeah. know you've seen a lot of, right. of individuals that um, are running their own businesses uh, you know. featured the delightful man who has Down syndrome and runs a restaurant yes I, yeah, yeah. Oh. what's the yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. so lovely yes. oh, and oh, I, I know yes. him and he's actually a motivational speaker now Where is, um, where's yeah, the it was it was in New Mexico and oh so it's it, not here it's, it's not, not okay. it, it was on Chronicle though it closed mm -hmm. um, because he went to go be with his fiance in Colorado oh, oh. but there is um, Colette cookies She's right here yeah. in Boston. Yeah. She's yeah. A, an individual girl, young lady with Down syndrome who's got her own cookie baking business right I here in Boston. She was that. just, yeah, yeah, she was just on the news and she was at the Massachusetts Down syndrome conference. Mm. So that's, so yeah. you've opened our eyes. Yes, so many, there's just so many opportunities. People just really need to get involved and, right. and be open and be open to the change right. and the new things that are coming along. I mean, like I said, uh, Hopkinton's been very, very good with, you know, bringing Jacob in, and he's mm -hmm. been so involved with everything. I mean, you meet him. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, he's not. How did you meet Jacob? I, at the spoon. At the spoon. At oh, the when you are at the spoon with the family. But I can't remember if he just waved to me or something. He probably just, he's very and outgoing. I, he probably just came up and said, hi. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> shy, I'm so shy, I'm retiring. And then we <laughs> discovered that he, um, or maybe I should say he discovered I know a little bit of sign language. Mm -hmm. Mine okay. is so passive. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've spoken right. and I have a hard time reading it. But we did a little bit of signing and yeah. he was very cute. He yeah. gave me a big hug. Yeah. So is Jacob your only child? I have a stepdaughter who's 22. She mm -hmm. is graduating from the University of Illinois in three weeks. Wow. And then wow. heading Ooh, to Temple. Okay. Oh, where's she, what's she going to do at Temple? She is a social worker. She's, okay. she's going for her master's in social work. Oh, so, excellent. Yeah. Her, her wow. brother, I think, gave her a, yeah. a vision. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah. And you also said you and your husband are going to be doing something. Yes. Yeah, so we are in the process of um, creating our own nonprofit, which hopefully will be, you know, launched within the next couple months. Um, and basically, the, the gist of it, our mission statement, is to provide parents um, who are not able to get funding or medical um, intervention, you know, what uh, mm -hmm. government assistance, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, but their child still needs therapy. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's really in that middle class where, you know, you, mm -hmm. you don't want them to have to be thinking, you know, should I fix the roof or put dinner on the table or mm -hmm. should I get, you know, Sammy yeah. his therapy? Right, you don't right. want them to be in that position where they have to make those and choices. And what do you mean by therapy? Is it um, speech therapy, something? occupational, um, you know, Jacob just did um, the hippotherapy over there. At, the what? Um, Hippotherapy, the the riding. The, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. they call it hippotherapy over so at uh, 
what are the ranch yeah, with horses? I'm trying to think. I Horse can't think, think, yeah, or I can't think of it all. Yeah. I, I was involved in a charity that collected old tennis balls, rounded them up, and then they became the, the turf for oh. uh, special needs. Um, the the um, sensory. Just no, no, they became the turf for the horses. Oh, so oh. if they fall, they oh, bounce. Yeah. Oh, they okay. bounce. Yeah. And then it was a uh, way of recycling tennis balls and then at the same time, a safer yeah. mat for yeah. special needs kids riding horses. Uh, we're actually using them yeah. for the sensory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, okay. and I know. Um, I think Dana Hall was so, the first so one that got that in. Yeah. Doing yeah. So the 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 nonprofit will then provide grants um, to individuals, to families who apply, fill out the application, and you know we haven't figured out all the criteria yet. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, the the point is to be able to provide them the funds that they need to get their son or daughter the therapies that doesn't they have need. a name yet right. it's special and determined special, special and determined mm -hmm. love it Thank is you. it launched or is this in progress it's it, we have our um 5013c mm -hmm. status mm -hmm. and basically what it came off of is my blog okay so mm -hmm. my blog for jacob mm -hmm. was is considered is called special and determined so mm -hmm. we just figured we'd carry off that you know we already had the audience there so where do people read your blog um, online, it's uh, special and determined. So you have your own work. website already. Yeah. That's great. we'll post yeah. all that. We'll post on all this that because I, I didn't yeah. even know that you had a blog. Yeah, I actually have yeah. a couple. Of them. Ah. Uh, <laughs> are they all well, in the yeah. well? Are they all in the, the advocacy yeah, world. Yeah, they are. So mm -hmm. it's all in the special needs. So mm -hmm. the other one is musings from a special needs mom ah, dot com, yeah. and that's more of you know my little life is in sure, right. creating yeah. a happy home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mom yeah. is creating a happy mm -hmm. home, and then yeah. you know specialanddetermined.org will be our nonprofit, and that is honestly the the blog that I have been using for you know obviously communicating Down syndrome awareness you know through Jacob's eyes. Yeah, um, yeah. And I didn't bring it with me, but I did write a book. I was oh, just about to act. Yeah. Actually, that was what I was asking. Yeah, because music sounds like it could be a book. When yeah. You start, yes. we'll start, when you start yeah. telling those little things. Yeah, so it's called, it's it's a little older, but it's Jacob's Journal, My Journey Home. So it's basically his journey home from the hospital. Okay. Because when I was diagnosed at four months that um, Jacob had a congenital heart defect, which is Tetralogy of Flow, mm -hmm. um, I knew that at four months. and the likelihood of him having Down syndrome because of that diagnosis was mm -hmm. very high, mm -hmm. but we didn't go through any of the amniocentesis. Yeah, okay. it, it was important to us at that time, but mm -hmm. the point was, he was going to have um, open heart surgery at 16 days. Wow. Yeah, oh. so we spent oh. the first month at Hope Children's Hospital in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. So that was kind of, wow. it started off as therapy, I should say, and then mm -hmm. it kind of um, morphed into a journal because I was then, you know, there was a lot of medical terms yes. and medicines and procedures that I was, you know, getting fed. And my sister, mm -hmm. who is a nurse in Baltimore, I would be communicating with her, like, look, they're right. doing this. And so then it kind of became a journal, and so then it kind of then became a book. And yes. so it's really, you know, is our on, journey. Is it on Amazon? It is on Amazon, oh. yeah. Oh. So and what's the name of the book again? My, uh, my <laughs> Jacob's Journal, My Journey Home. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so it's the first month and then kind of we'll like the first month too. home of him doing therapy right before he actually had open heart surgery at six months old. But see, so as a no. mother, as a new mom, I mean, just we're, we're nervous wrecks anyway. <laughs> and so what the added, you know, um, pressure and feelings about that anxiety, mm -hmm. my goodness. I mean, and to be strong and, you know, take on the things that help everyone mm -hmm. as far as um, well, how that, you that's become kind of even what my talk involved. was about with mm -hmm. uh, the United Nations at the World Down Syndrome Day was that you know I wasn't yeah I, I knew there was a potential but I didn't do any you know testing mm -hmm. or anything and my husband made me promise not to do any googling because mm -hmm. really you know no child's development is the same you right, know right. so I couldn't base you know okay so my child has Down Syndrome what does that mean right. that doesn't mean it, yeah. Anything really? Right. I mean, there's certain, yeah, there's yeah. certain, um, you know, uh, things that you need to look for. But every child is different, so I couldn't do that. And so basically, um, I, I actually was uh, in Special Olympics. I volunteered for Special Olympics, and my point was that no matter how many years I volunteered in Special Olympics, couldn't prepare me for my child having Down syndrome. Okay. And um. all I could think about was how am I going to get him the services he needed? Yeah. Yeah. How am I going to get him what he needs to live a quality of life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where it all began, you know, getting involved with the therapies and doing my research. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with the nonprofit you guys are opening up, will that be advocacy just for Down syndrome? Would it be other? It's going to be advocacy for Down syndrome so just because be that's, that where, focus, that's yeah. what we know. And so um, 
you know, there are plenty of other organizations out there for um, other disabilities, but just because that's what we know mm -hmm. and um, we could provide them the services and the therapies that we know, you know, may have helped us or, you know, we have connections through Mass General with mm -hmm. Dr. Brian Scottco, mm -hmm. who runs the Down Syndrome program over there. So, so, yeah, so today. we have a wonderful mm -hmm. um, access to all that stuff. So. so what does he like to do? Like, I mean. Loves basketball. <laughs> that would take a second. Was he, was he at that basketball game? <laughs> he yeah. Did, yeah, he did. He loves, he loves special. He was part of the Coach Keen when, um, oh, with this wow. after school, the extracurricular. Okay. He does do, um, he did do Special Olympics, but now it's swimming. So mm -hmm. he's doing Special Olympics swimming with Coach Eileen. Eileen Locke's daughter, Megan, mm -hmm. will be graduating. She has Down syndrome. She'll be graduating from um, Hopkinton. Oh. And so, um, but his other thing is he loves Notre Dame. Obviously, we're from Indiana. South Bend is <laughs> in our backyard. Uh -oh, we're we're cool. huge Notre Dame fans, <laughs> and he loves music, anything mm. musical. Wow. You know, um, does, he, so. does he play an instrument or have an interest? He hasn't. In um, he likes, they're called ribbon sticks, and no. I don't know if you oh, know. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, so okay. that is his thing. Okay. I personally think he's going to be like a drum majorette. Or something. Okay, like, okay. I, don't, I don't know, or a conductor <laughs> or something, because he, 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 that's his, like, that's his safe haven. He's not... You know, he's not really the technical kid who's sitting there oh, doing yeah. Minecraft oh, and all good. that. I, I mean, mean, yes, yeah. he knows how to work all that, mm -hmm. but um, he's not, not into that thing. stuff. He mm -hmm. just, he Does loves he, the arts. That's so wonderful. he was at that basketball game with the police? Yes, he was, yeah. Uh, so Connie and I were yeah. at that for yeah. I, I was only there for a short time. Yeah. She was, I think, there yeah. for the duration, yeah. but um, it, it was fun. And again, and again, and again, the okay. and, I, and again, the police lost. I don't know how they did I don't know how they did that. It was kind of funny. The cheerleaders went out and played for a little bit, mm -hmm. and no offense, ladies, but the Special Olympics team was really doing far better than you guys. <laughs> 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 like, oh, come on, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but there are such shout -outs. wonderful programs that yeah. you know can include all, mm -hmm. all all children, and I think that's the biggest thing. Was, you know, yes. is get that's everybody awesome. involved. So we all have special talents. Mm -hmm. yes, we all do. can contribute. Yes, absolutely. So. This is World Syndrome Day, mm -hmm. right? Down um, Syndrome Day, and we'll put up that website. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. And that was from 321, and that was when you were at the UN. Yes. And then this is Lou Mine, the one that you're involved in now. Yes, that's the organization then, right in Marlboro. Um, what we'd love to do is on the Real Housewives page. Once you're ready to launch yeah. the yeah. nonprofit, we'll post it up and let Thank them know you. that there's oh, more information sure. and yeah, things I like that. that. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you'll have a Facebook page yes. for the nonprofit oh, and things like that. We'll share it then. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. Get the yeah, word out a little bit. Yeah. That's Thank awesome. You. I appreciate that. Ooh, we yeah. won't say goodbye quite yet. We'll do some shout outs about what's going on in the neighborhood uh, this thing, weekend. You know, as, um, Where we go? Well, there's a lot going on. I guess, you know, as we end near the end of April, um, there's lake cleanups, so Lake Whitehall and Maspinock have their cleanups on uh, April 29th. Mm -hmm. uh, May 1st is a biggie in town because that's annual town meeting. There's 63 articles on the um, Come on out. Mm -hmm. on the, like on just the, the other day we were doing that. Well, that, that was, okay, that was a special one. <laughs> now, now this is the real one. So we, we have special now. We have real. Oh, the real okay. And so there's real ones. And, 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 you know, there's 63 articles. I mean, hopefully it doesn't Lots take three nights. Lots of study up on. A lot, you know, and... Um, there are things that have, you know, just happened that get you a chance to know your vote and know things that are going on. Um, town elections May 15th, so, you know, get to know candidates out there. Um, and things that are already live out there that are coming up in June is, um, you know, register for the Tim Lynn race that's coming up in yeah. June. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 5K, right? And the, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a 5K. It's actually, you know, the biggest kind of we party in June. Yeah, it's, it's a big carnival right. afterwards. And then the... Um, Farmers Market opens June 11th, I so I think that's wait a, yeah, I know, so I mean, there's a lot that happens as we lead into prom and graduation season. Right. When's you know? the Grand March? Yeah, Grand March is, my, is May 12th. Oh. I will be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I actually have. Oh, I think we should come and be a cheering. Section. Oh, you shoot. can come be a cheering section. Get <laughs> there early. We've, we've, we've got, got a couple of years nails, for hair, and for that. Up, <laughs> nails, hair, makeup, limo, everything's done. Oh, we just God. ordered. Wow. We just ordered the boutonniere two days ago. Wow. Don't think you get off like easy because because it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no wait wait a second she does it's way easier with the boy oh, than with the boss. No, the, the, the makeup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's haircuts. Or I can't get a buzz cut and then we were done. No. Uh, <laughs> but I mean that, that that's a lot of what's yeah. going on you know in the next few weeks so. It's fun. It's yeah. Check it out, and we, and we try to post those up on you know the Real Housewives page and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, 
And so we'll get to know your charity a little bit more as we get closer. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank Are you here. feeling so integrated into Hopkinton just as a family? You're still a newcomer I, two oh years yeah, in. Oh, yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. I am. And um, I have to... You know, I have to thank everybody for welcoming us. I know I've been here for two years, but, um, you know, just the Real Housewives page has been so helpful, like when we first moved here, yeah. just getting to know what's what's out there, what's happening. And um, I know, like, we're in our community. We're very, very active, and we like to... Uh, we like to watch out for one another, so I think yeah, that's what's really, that's you know, that's about. what makes it home, too, is that, mm -hmm. you know, my neighbor texted me, I was in Hilton Head, she's like, are you expecting company? I was like, no, we have somebody there. But <laughs> it's, it's just, you wouldn't really get that in Indiana. Right. I mean, because it was, yeah. you know, there was just, they were so far spread apart, and, mm -hmm. you know, people weren't really knowing what was, but... Hopkinton's been a blessing for us. Well, we are so happy you. you are We're here. Happy. It's wonderful yeah. to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye. Do you have what it takes? Make a difference. Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Possibility. It starts early. Before we even know what it is. Thanks to people who make it happen. Together. We are possibility. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.